some of y'all might be going, Rose, you're crazy. Well, I've been called worse, and yes, yes, I am crazy. 15 Sarah Black, 15 Cherokee Purple, 5 Blush Grape, 6 Atomic Grape, 15 Sugar Cherry, 5 4th of July, 6 Solar Flare, 13 Cherokee Purple, 7 San Marzano, 6 Super San Marzano, 8 Oxheart, 7 Pink Berkeley Tie Dye, 7 Berkeley Tie Dye Green, 15 Italian Sweet Beef Steak, 7 Basil African Blue, Hey y'all, guess what? I got my tractor working. I really turned it on. Alright, I'm gonna replow some trenches, y'all. tractor working again Ryan. My tractor just stopped working. <laughs> again? Yeah. <laughs> you need a brand new shiny bucket truck John Deere. Yeah I would love to have a <laughs> four-wheel drive tractor with a front end loader and a little bit bigger with a little bit more power than this one. <laughs> it's a good and tractor. And not so many repairs. It's a good tractor but she's needy. Yeah. All right, folks, we've been gifted 141 tomato plants that we need to get in the ground. So our corn mishap is going to turn into a tomato blessing. This is a case of pay it forward. You see, the people who gifted us these tomatoes are people who have received many gifted plants in the past when they were just starting out and they knew a nursery that would be throwing away their leftovers and they would get all of their plants. Well, this was the last day of their tomato sale and this was what they had left. So they gifted them to us because we have the space and the time to plant them. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and rescue them from the compost. As you can see, they're in excellent health, really, really good and some really great varieties in here. decided to skip a row in between to allow room and it looks like I'm gonna get another row so these are the large variety slicers and this is what I have left some Roma and cherries so I probably got about two more rows to drop in and let Ryan plant so we'll still have some room for some watermelon or pumpkins or squash or what have you and got all of these tomatoes. Now they may not end up getting staked at all and if they do I don't even know what I'm gonna be able to use yet so still thinking on that. I would like to do the Florida weave but I don't think I have enough tea posts and twine. 
Definitely don't have enough twine because I lost my big roll. I replaced it with a, a small roll, but I need, I need more if I'm going to be doing Florida weave on this much space. But the good thing is twine is cheap and I can just go by the local hardware store, feed store, and probably get a large roll there so that I'll have enough. Uh, T-post is another question. I'm going to have to look around, see if I can find some old bent ones or such to use that aren't good for fencing because we are saving every T-post we find to use in our new fenced area that we need to move the cattle to. So, wish us luck. Some of y'all might be going, Rose, you're crazy. Well, I've been called worse and yes, yes I am crazy. Okay, for those of you that think that I'm crazy because I'm planting in the middle of a heat wave and drought, that's the good news. The temperature has finally come down into the 80s and it actually feels pretty good right now when the wind blows. I'm not gonna lie, it's still hot, but it's Georgia hot. I'm used to this. This I can work with. And we are expecting a forecast of chances of rain every day this week. So right now is literally the best time to get our middle of the summer planting in. I'm going to try to get as many seeds out as well. So this is like, hurry up. Today is the day. Let's get it all done. Ryan goes back to work tomorrow. So I won't have his help the rest of the week. But I want to try to get as much of a late summer garden put in as possible so that we can have tons of bounty come August. All right, so we ended up with three very long rows of tomatoes. And now Ryan's burying a long row of watermelon seed. And I might be putting more watermelon seed in the row next to it or some pumpkins. We'll see. I'm going through my seeds now and uh, just putting as many out as I can that are older seed and don't know how much germination we'll have. If it's too much germination because I put a lot of seed out, so be it. And if it's no germination because it's all too old to germinate, then so be it. Well, this is the only way to find out, right? Can't, can't have success if you don't try. Really, it's probably safe to say that I've turned into a little bit of a seed hoarder. So I have some seed that are really old. So I am definitely wanting to use them up and start out with seed I know are going to germinate on the first try for next year's garden. So getting these out of my stash and not holding on to them just because I'm a hoarder, uh, it's going to feel good. It's, it's going to be a good feeling to go through them all and get them in the ground if they're going to grow. And if they're not, then I can start out with something new next year. This is the proper way to bury your seeds. No tools required. Just two feet and excellent balance. Beautiful. Uh, that's one way to plant a watermelon. All right, guys, I gotta share this with you. I already shared it with my pal Lorella and over at Plan B Orchard and Farm, and she got to witness it at the very moment that I did, because I was giving her a garden tour with my Marco Polo. <laughs> 
and look at what I found. Ta da Well, that just kind of snuck up out of nowhere, didn't it? Okra fruit grows so fast from the point of flowering that you have to pick it very often or it will get too big. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest whatever little okra I can find throughout these okra plants here. I have seen a few smaller ones too, so I'm gonna get to it. Now, if you see this at the top of your okra fruit, don't be scared. It is the bloom has died and a fungus has started to grow on the bloom but it generally just likes the dead material. So if you pull that bloom off and dispose of that, it won't spread to your fruit. This is a little friend called Botrytis. Little silvery gray hairs of fungal spores. That's a big one. These beans have struggled more than any beans I've ever grown before. I think it's just because of how hot it's been. But looky here. Our first beans of the season to harvest. These will go right in my mouth. I might share them with the boys. So a couple of okra, not enough for a meal, but just picking them while they're small because okra double in size every day. So. I if they get too big, they get too hard to eat. So I like them nice and tender. 